Supporting live comedy. I stand before you, ladies and gentlemen, as the world's first and only stand up economist. <laughs> My dad told me I was crazy. Your mom, he said, You can't be a stand up economist, there's no demand. <laughs> I am killing. I said, don't worry, Dad, I'm a supply-side economist. I just stand up and let the jokes trickle down. I believe in the laughter curve. A couple, a couple of people. Thank you. I only have a couple of things going for me as a stand-up economist. One of them is low expectations. Low expectations put George Bush in the White House. The other thing I have going for me as a stand-up economist is I can make fun of macroeconomists. You know I'm a real economist because I can make fun of sub-disciplines that are totally indistinguishable to people on the outside. You know, people in Washington make fun of people in Oregon, people in Alabama make fun of people in Mississippi, people in prison make fun of people in graduate school. People are always asking me if I'm afraid of failure. I'm like, afraid of failure? I used to teach introductory microeconomics at 8 o'clock in the morning in Walla Walla, Washington. I have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I have given lectures on cost-benefit analysis in the valley of the shadow of death. I think that's enough for the economics jokes. You want more economics jokes? Okay, these are some new ones I'm just working on them, so you guys... Be patient with me, okay? These these are my knockoffs on uh, on Jeff Foxworthy's. Uh, you might be a redneck if these are. You might be an economist if. Uh, you might be an economist if you've ever tried to pick up somebody in a bank. Uh, you might be an economist if you're an expert on money and you dress like a flood victim. This one's my favorite. You might be an economist if you go to a Chinese restaurant and open up the fortune cookie and add at the margin at the end of it. Finally, uh, if you refuse to sell your children because you think they might be worth more later, <laughs> you might be in the I don't know who you people are over here, but I love you. I love you. In honor of the 4th of July, ladies and gentlemen, I thought I would tell a big joke. <laughs> About, about the Founding Fathers. So George Washington and Benjamin Franklin were having a debate about whether there should be a standing army in the United States or whether we should just have like the Army Reserve and George Washington said we should have a standing army and Benjamin Franklin rose in opposition and said that he was against it because having a standing army was like having an erect member. Although it provides excellent assurance for domestic tranquility, it creates a temptation for foreign adventures. <laughs> were never spoken. It's the summertime, ladies and gentlemen, that means that uh, our president is probably reading again. <laughs> I'm delighted that he's a reader. I'm just disappointed he's not more of an understander. <laughs> and I'm terrified that he's the decider. I think he ought to read more. I think he ought to talk to people more, too, and, like people across the political spectrum. I think everybody should do that. You know what, to fix American democracy, here's what I think we ought to do. All the young single people, go and date somebody on the other side of the political spectrum. Right? That goes for everybody. If you're a Democrat, go date a Republican. If you support the Green Party, go date a Libertarian. Right? I mean, I know for some of you it's a challenge. If you're a Democrat and you're gay, there just aren't that many congressional Republicans left. <laughs> you might have to try the evangelical pastors. <laughs> I am allowed to tell that joke. Because I dated a Republican. She was a good kind of Republican, though, like Rudy Giuliani, you know? She was fiscally conservative and socially promiscuous. She was a lot hotter than Rudy, though. 
Now, here's what I'm going to do for the rest of the time I have left. For the rest of the evening, you folks over here, I'm going to divide you up across the political spectrum. You folks over here, from here on over, you guys for the rest of the night, you guys are the left wing. Yeah. That was an appropriate amount of enthusiasm for the left wing. <laughs> Look, I know you guys are disappointed. You've had a couple of bad years, but wait until 2008 when the Democrats take back the White House, because then you'll be really disappointed. <laughs> Let's try this again. You guys over here, you guys are the left wing. Not bad, but watch this. You guys over here for the rest of the night, you guys are the right wing. <laughs> Look, that was okay, but when I did this in Texas last week, they started chanting USA. <laughs> It was really the most amazing experience of my life. So I want you guys to do that for me. Like, dig down. I, you guys up front here, you weren't chanting. Dig down. Find your inner red meat, okay? Put yourself in the mind frames of people that uh, believe in social Darwinism, but don't believe in Darwin's theory of evolution. Right? <laughs> On count of three, I want to chant of USA. You guys over here, you guys are my right wing. USA! 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 Go ahead. Good. That was much better. Much better. And you guys on the left wing, you guys were perfect. Because while they were chanting USA, you were just sitting there looking befuddled. <laughs> vaguely unpatriotic. I don't know how that happens. It's not just the left and the right, though. Like, on the far extremes of the political spectrum, like on the far right of the political spectrum, you folks at this table right here, you guys are my libertarians. And on the far left of the political spectrum, you folks here, you guys are the libertarians. <laughs> Did you guys get that? <laughs> Libertarians. Not the people that check books out for you. <laughs> you know what, sir? I don't think you're a libertarian. You know what you are? You're a swing voter, sir. You're one of those people, you're clueless, you're apathetic, and every four years you determine the fate of the free world. <laughs> This man right here, ladies and gentlemen, this man is the idiot savant of democracy. Give him a round of applause. Let me close with a joke that's going to appeal to people across the political spectrum. So, uh, Nixon, Ford, and Carter all die, go to the afterworld, they end up in a big white room. This big voice booms out and says, President Nixon, go into the room on your left. And Nixon goes into the room on his left. And there's Charles Manson. And the voice booms out and says, President Nixon, you've sinned. You must spend eternity with Charles Manson. The voice says, President Ford, go into the room on your right. And Ford goes into the room on his right. And there's Jeffrey Dahmer. The voice says, President Ford, you have sinned. You must spend eternity with Jeffrey Dahmer. The voice says, President Carter, go into the room in front of you. And Carter goes into the room in front of him. And there's Paris Hilton. The voice says, Paris Hilton, you have sinned. <laughs> hey, my name is Jerome Bell. You guys have been awesome.